So the politics of the day, our panel are now Peter McGoran and Emma Webster. Peter, the legal advice with the government, the Prime Minister being briefed on it as we speak, he's committed to releasing it tomorrow. There's not real a suggestion that this anything illegal was done, but more just that convention had been broken by the former Prime Minister Scott Morrison, Peter, with his multiple ministries. Uh, you're perfectly correct, Kieran, and for dedicated viewers... Uh, we'll remember that we were discussing this seven days ago as the story was breaking and at that time Simon Banks correctly uh, expressed his outrage and the secrecy, the betrayal of trust with ministers uh, and I expressed incredulity but believed they were likely to be reserve powers. And everything that's been said since, Kieran, really what's left to be said? Everybody has an opinion all those opinions have been expressed, canvassed and published. This surely, surely must be the beginning of the end of the saga. Not for Scott Morrison and perhaps not so much for the Liberal opposition, but by way of analysis, I'm struggling to find anything new to say. Emma Webster, what's your read on this for the Prime Minister? Does he need to be careful, given Peter's view there, that we're almost, uh, you know, sort of... At the end of that drama, does he have to be cautious in the way that he manages this to get back to bread and butter issues? Well, if the report comes out tomorrow, that's another day of this story ticking along. It's another day of distraction for the coalition another day where we might see more coalition members come forward and call for the former Prime Minister to resign. And it takes away from the rebuilding process for the coalition uh, following the election defeat in May this year. Uh, it's a complete distraction. Uh, if you're on the, the Labor side of things, um, you probably want it to continue to go along. Um, but if you are a member of the coalition, I think you want Morrison out of the parliament and you want to get on with things. Yeah, well, that's certainly the view of Karen Andrews. Emma, when the government does get back to uh, its focus, it's on in terms of its agenda, that's the job summit. A big one next week and those roundtables continuing almost daily with various ministers consulting with business, unions and specific industries. That's right. And I think the job summit and the roundtables highlight the complexity of the issue that the government is trying to tackle right now. Uh, unlike previous governments, uh, they're not just throwing money at the issue, they're considering it, they're listening, they're consulting, but they also recognise that it's not just about listening, it's about getting the different parties to the table and getting them communicating with each other. Employers need to step up, uh, employees need to step up, the government needs to step up. Uh, and I think that's what this process is. Some have criticised it and called it a talk fest, but I think that's exactly what needs to happen. It's not about being spoken to, it's about listening. Peter McGoran, this, um, as we, we touched on, is the, the government's agenda as opposed to having a crack at the, the predecessors. So that's important from an optics sense, but in terms of delivery as well, how hard is it to take a, a summit into reforms? That depends on the resolve and the conviction of, of the government. It is a talk fest, but like Emma, I think it's a necessary talk fest because it gives business a seat at the table and I don't want the unions just to be putting their side of the argument and we've seen the government already capitulate to the CFMEU and the Maritime Union uh, on a number of issues. But because rem I, I'm confident in saying it's a talk fest, Kieran, because the, the outcomes being sought are agreed on. Uh, higher wages, real wages, tied to productivity uh, and, and increasing in the skills of the uh, underskilled Australian workforce and set, setting an immigration number of skilled, uh, skilled immigrants. But the question is, uh, how do you... And all those issues are covered within the government bureaucracy. They were papers before the previous government. They will be papers before this government. Um, it really depends on... Uh, and the ACTU largely endorses that agenda already. So it's a question of everybody uniting behind those objectives to give the government 
political courage to the extent that they need it. And there's no doubt it is needed, given this skills crisis, Emma. The OECD analysis recently uh, published suggested that we're down the bottom of the list of developed countries when it comes to the, the, um, the roadblocks, the, um, the skills crisis that we have in this country. Yeah, that's right. And it certainly hasn't been helped by a couple of years with our borders closed to uh, the international and global community. Um, like I've said, it is a very complex issue and it requires a lot of talking, a lot of listening. And that is why this summit is ongoing and it involves roundtables um, and a, a lot of chatting.